Hi everyone, welcome to It's Due at 11.59. I'm your host, Susie, and this, well, kind of hidden away, is Huddles. She's our co-host. So this is my first podcast, um, so I'm not too sure how I can go about this, um, but I do want to tell a little about myself just to introduce you guys to me. Well, first thing about me is that I'm a student and something that my friends know about me is that I am blind and I'm saying blind as a fucking bat. And there's something that I've been looking into which is called a laser surgery. Um, just so that I can get my eyes fixed and I've talked to a couple of people and they were like, oh yeah, I totally recommend it. I was really interested in, you know, getting a laser surgery, but after hearing about this incident, I started to doubt the procedure and made me curious to look into it. So before I go into details, I do want to preface that... This is my first podcast, so I'm going to try my best to remain unbiased and stay true to facts. And all sources are linked in the description. Uh, I am uploading this on YouTube for visual watchers and on Spotify, if I can get it to work, for audio. The sources will be linked under the YouTube videos if you're interested in looking into it. Another thing that I want to add is that I couldn't find a lot of information or in-depth information on her and all the informations that I'm going to be discussing are all available to the general public. If I mention anything incorrectly or if there's any other details that you guys want to add in, please feel free to just reach out to me or leave that in the comment section. So on October 11th, 2018, Jessica bravely walked in for an eye surgery and she was seeking to enhance her vision and improve her eye health. So some source says that she has astigmatism, um, but I can't verify this information um, with other sources. And pretty much she went in for a LASIK-like surgery called SMILE, also known as Small Incision Lenticle Extraction. And it's very promising as it is said to be less invasive compared to other LASIK surgery. It's approved by the FDA or the Food and Drug Administration back in 2016. It has a 99% success rate according to the National Institute of Health. Right after the surgery, Jessica knew that immediately something was off and she started experiencing symptoms like dry eyes, starburst, um, visions that were coming in and out of focus, severe pains. And because of those symptoms, she decided to go to different um, doctors for their opinions and just check up on her eyes. But none could help besides just prescribing her painkillers and other, um, just giving her suggestions. And then just two months later, her friends and colleague had to make the hard choice of informing people about her suicide. Two by 11.59. So Jessica was born in Southfield, Michigan, and she was raised in Commerce Township for majority of her life. In the early 2000s, she met her husband, Dan Rose, and had two kids with her. She really loved her kids and her husband, and on the biography on Fox 2 site, she talks dearly about her husband and her son. She stated, when I'm not at work, you can find me spending time with my husband. In another interview that she did, she stated, A baby would change your life every way for the better. Everything I do is for him. Being a mom was something I always wanted to be. Professionally, I just want to keep growing. I'm really happy right now. So I did paraphrase this a little, but that's pretty much just quote-unquote what she said. Jessica earned two meteorology degrees from the Michigan State University and from Mississippi State University. She used to work at the WLNC-TV as a meteorologist in Lansing, Michigan. And then in 2008, she moved to Baltimore, Maryland and worked for WBFF-TV, which she covered mainly weather and community events. In 2012, she decided to work for Fox 2 Detroit and went viral for wearing a green dress during a weather forecast session that she was doing. 
So for some of you who don't know, what happens is that because she was standing behind, she was standing in front of a, per, a green screen projector, when they activated the projector, the green dress disappeared and you could just see her head and her arms just flaying around. And rather than getting mad or getting stressed out, she laughed and cracked jokes with her colleagues and just started dancing around and making the best out of the situation. And this is why meteorologists don't wear green. <laughs> it's why we're not allowed. It's the one color that we can't wear. Oh, there we go. See? Do it no, again. Walk Do it again. Jessica would talk with her friends, and she's met a couple colleagues and friends who had a LASIK surgery, and so she decided to, to get one. And so she decided on the smile surgery. So what is a smile surgery? Before I go into that, I do want to explain that there are three different types of LASIK or laser surgery and I want to dig into what they are um, just to give a little bit of information and context. The first type of laser surgery is called PRK. It's also known as a photorefractive keratomy and it's mainly to treat myopia which is nearsightedness where you can see things from like Front, like close up, which is what I have. It also treats hyperopia, which is farsightedness, um, astigmatism, which is what Jessica is said to have, um, but don't quote me on that. And this occurs when the cornea is shaped abnormally or curved abnormally. So let's say our eyes is curved like a basketball, but rather than curving like a basketball, one's eyes is curved like a football. And so it causes the way that light is taken in and reflected out differently. During a PRK procedure, an eye drop is applied to the eyes and it numbs it down. And then once the eyes is numb, they use an eyelid holder to prevent the patient from blinking. And then the surgeon would remove the surface cell of the cornea. From what I could see, it's pretty much just the surgeon scraping the top layer of the cornea away, which uh, it, was a, it was interesting to look at. Um, and then the femtosecond laser comes into place and it pretty much generates a pulse that defines and outlines the shape of the cornea based on the patient's situation. So it's like going around, just like generating pulses really fast. A special contact is placed to protect the eye and it stays on the patient's eye for about a week. The whole procedure takes about one to two minutes per eye, so you're walking in and out pretty quick. The next one is LASIK. It's called Laser Assisted in Situ, in situ Keratomeliosis. I, I, I butcher that a lot. We're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about that. Um, but this method is more popular and has been around longer. It has over 90 million procedures that were performed in the United States. And the main thing that it treats is farsightedness, nearsightedness, astigmatism, refractiveness, and also refractiveness errors that were caused by the other procedure. So if there was an error in the smile surgery, you would use the LASIK um, procedure to fix it. Or if there was something wrong with a PRK surgery, you would use the LASIK to fix it. During a LASIK surgery, they use a computer program that utilizes a space age technology. Uh, pretty much this technology was built for space and it measures the topography of the eye, so the way that the eyes is shaped. It also re measures the refractive error of the eye, and it pretty much covers over 1,200 zones of cornea. So imagine how small our eyes are, and it pretty much measures the really, really tiny amount and precise um, measurement of our eye, pretty much. And then after that, it creates a surgical plan for each eye because, of course, each of our eyes are different and our eyes is so important and vital that we must be very precise with it. And during a LASIK surgery, it uses two laser rather than one compared to the SMILE or the PRK. Um, it uses the femtosecond laser 
that was previously used in the PRK, and it also uses the excimer laser. The femtosecond laser is first used to cut a corner around the cornea and it creates almost like a 270 degrees so we're talking about this much so we're talking like almost 360 almost around the cornea and it targets specifically the epithelia and then after it cuts it creates a flap so they pretty much lift that flap up of corneal and fold it back to expose the underneath tissue which is the stroma then the surgeon uses the excimer laser which guides which is guided by the computer program to reshape the underlying stroma by removing necessary corneal tissue and using the UV light and uses the UV lights to help cornea focus light more precisely. And then they take the flap and flips it back into the eye and places a clear plastic shield tape over the eye. The main reason why they place it is to prevent individuals from rubbing their eyes and they leave it on until next morning except when they need to drop some eye drops in it. And then they also have to wear the eye shields for the first four to five nights or pretty much any time that they're sleeping. This procedure takes about a minute or less for each eye so you're walking in and out as well. Some side effect with this procedure is that there's common risks of dry eyes, burning, itching, and that's probably due to the reason because of the corneal nerves being severed during the flap creation. However, it is said to disappear within 3 to 12 months, and the corneal flap being created might weaken the corneal. The last procedure we're discussing is the smile procedure. And this is the one that Jessica Starry had done. And the main thing that it fixes is simple form of nearsightedness, farsightedness, or light astigmatism, or both. Um, and it's fairly new. It was created in 2016 and conducted over 3 million times. Now, it also uses a femtosecond laser, which generates pulses to define and outline a thin lens-shaped piece of corneal tissue called a lenticle. And this is just a layer under the cornea. And so what happens is that once a laser creates the lenticle, they cr also uses the laser to create a keyhole incision, which is just to cut a small area of it. It's no longer than 3.8 milliliter long, so we're talking a really short incision. Then the surgeons go in and they remove the lenticle and they're pretty much just dragging the lenticle out from under the cornea. And this pretty much reshapes the cornea and improves the patient's vision. So the idea is that it's best for a high degree of nearsightedness and those who are prone to dry eyes because of the minimal incision that's placed on the cornea. And so because of the small incision, it leads to less sensation of dry eyes after it's been completed. Again, it's said to not be as invasive as the other procedures, and Smile Advertise claims that patients return to their daily activities faster than other PRK. Because of the small incision, it also means that there's a short recovery. It takes about 24 weeks to stabilize a vision. However, others disagree on this. Some states that LASIK is quicker than smile recovery wise. So according to an article that I read, uh, please keep in mind that this article that I read is a bit biased since it's from a organization that only does LASIK and so I felt like when I was reading it there was a lot of exaggerations and a lot of bias. So the informations that I'll be saying and the risks that I'm going to be saying are a bit exaggerated. I felt like it's important that I included the information from this website even though it's biased because it added a different perspective. So please take it with a grain of salt as I'm continuing to say this. So according to the website, it states that most patients are comfortable enough to return to work the next day with LASIK and those with smile, the visual outcomes takes longer for them to achieve compared to LASIK 
and it takes a month um, or more to achieve the peak level of vision for smile patient. Some risks uh, is associated with smile is that are there are concerns for debris being left behind. So smile involves separating or removing a piece from the middle of the cornea, which is again the lenticle. And so because of that, there's possible there's possibility that some of the tissue of the lenticle can be left behind and with debris being left behind, this can lead to corneal abrasion or pretty much a scratched eyes. Um, but the scratch on the corneas can heal within a day or two. Um, and sometimes individuals can get a corneal abrasion from their contact, just scratching the corneal. Um, and with the debris left, another issue is adhesions, which is when membranes um, st sticks together um, and they shouldn't be sticking together. And this can cause uncomfortability within the eye and there can also be incisional tears because of that. If it becomes really bad then a second surgery may be required to remove those debris. Another risk is inflammation and this symptom is expected in any invasive procedure so we're talking it's expected in a RPK in LASIK and SMILE however because there's more corneal tissue being removed there's a higher risk for inflammation. Another symptom is dry eyes, a common side effect for those who has gotten a laser surgery. However, SMILE claims that they have less chance of a dry eyes than other LASIK patients. So SMILE claims that patients experience less dry eyes because the operation requires less corneal nerve damage. However, there is concern for people with pre-existing dry eyes problem and it's a study was done that stated that six months and after there was no difference in LASIK or smile patient about dry eyes. The final risk is over or under vision correction with smile. Because a corneal tissue is being removed, this can cause the vision to become over or under corrected and it can make the vision worse for the patient. Now, if there's an overcorrection, if a patient has nearsightedness, they now have farsightedness because we have taken out too much of the lenticles. And so once that's been done, the patient is forced to wait until the vision stabilizes before they can do a, a correction of the vision. And again, they cannot do a smile again and they must do a PRK or a LASIK just to fix this. On October 11, 2018, Jessica went in for an eye surgery to enhance her vision and she stated that she had high script and wore contacts for over 23 years. Right after her smile surgery, she knew that something was off with the surgery and within three to four days, her husband stated that she started saying, I think something went wrong. I don't feel right. And then Jessica started experiencing starburst, which is when the light, especially at night, are flashing bright and creating almost like a sun shape. For example, if you're looking up at the sun, what happens is that you start seeing like rays coming out of the sun. That's pretty much what the um, starburst looks like. In addition to that, her visions were coming in and out and she was experiencing severe pains and all of these symptoms forced her to make visits to different doctors and ask for their opinion, but none of them could help her besides prescribing painkillers and... A couple weeks after the surgery, Dan shared that there was a time when he and Jessica were in the kitchen and Jessica had just came back from her third or fourth doctor's visit and he could tell that she was acting strange. He grabbed Jessica and pulled her in close and asked her, what's wrong? What is going on? What are you looking for? The doctors are telling you the same thing. What are you trying to find? And Jessica had a concern looked in her eyes and she said to Dan, 
it's like my eyes are not communicating like they used to. I can't process like I used to. I'm not visualizing things like I used to. And it's quite evident that Jessica's frustrations and overwhelmingness with hopelessness was taking over within that two months. She started experiencing a dry eyes and in a video that she was recording, she stated that she had to put in a eye drop every five minutes or so just to clear her vision up and then her vision goes blurry again. In the video, she's talking about the weather and she's just updating the viewers on what she's been up to, what her daughter Riley has been was wearing for Halloween and what her son was dressed up as for Halloween. And towards the end of the live, she mentioned that she's struggling a bit. However, she is open to any inputs that people have and and she's she wants to stay motivated, to stay strong. Because of the pain and the issue with her vision, it prevented her from working. She had to take days off of work. It prevented her from taking care of her children and ultimately she started withdrawing. She couldn't eat and sleep and just felt depressed. And so within these times, she started a video diary to compare her recovery and symptoms. And during her last video in November, she stated, I don't know. I'm kind of frustrated, upset, regret. I'm really mad at myself for doing this. I was finding contacts. Glasses weren't that big of a deal. And on November 14, 2018, she updated on Twitter and said, update, yesterday was a struggle for me. I really wanted to come back, but I need more time to recover. Please keep me in your thoughts during this challenging time. We'll keep you updated. So within these two posts, you can really tell that she's getting frustrated and she's very desperate for any advice and help. But within two months, Jessica took her life at the age of 35 and she left series of videos and over 30 page suits I know for Dan, who she's been with for 17 years. After many weeks of grief and sadness, Dan finally started sharing Jessica's videos to spread awareness about the side effects of eye surgeries and he urged individuals to watch out for any signs. Now, there are many debates over eye surgery and mental illness and many believe that she many believe that Jessica Starr had become depressed because of this eye surgery and others believe that she was depressed way before the eye surgery. However, Dan denies the possibility that she was depressed before the eye surgery and I think it's important that we respect his belief and thoughts since he knows Jessica better than we do. Around October, there's a guy named Paul Fitzpatrick who had killed himself after 20 years of a failed PRK laser surgery back in 1996. He had suffered headache and had pain that felt like what he described, needles in his eyes. Paul had left a suicide note that said, I cannot experience any type of pleasure anymore. Just the pain of burning eyes inside my head and throughout myself. Since 1996, pain, pain, and more pain. Please forgive me for not being strong enough to cope. The past few months have been unbearable. I feel really, really bad that Paul had felt like it was his fault when in fact it's not anyone's fault at all. And what made it worse was that Paul went to multiple doctors and traveled to different countries to hopefully treat the pain, but he wasn't able to find a cure for it. Paula Coffer operates a website that's focused on laser complications and they believe that there's a link between eye surgery and depression. Um, she states that if the surgery does not go as planned, the patient is often experiencing guilt. They have a really hard mental toll on them because it's something that they had chose to uh, go into and they feel responsible for that. And so Paula believes that there are many complications to the surgery 
Um, some typical complaints that she discussed was chronic dry eyes, eye pain, horrible night vision, and these ultimately can lead to depression. They also believe that complication is much higher than what is expected or stated out in public. She believed that complication is experienced about 10 to 30 percent of all patients. I feel like I sound like I'm anti-LASIK surgery or laser surgery, um, but I do want to say that laser surgery has a 99% success rate, and I really like the new innovative technology that's been created with the main purpose of making individuals' life better. I think it's also important to consider that if you are looking into getting a laser surgery, which I also consider getting a laser surgery, it's important to look at that 1% and the risks that's associated with it and be informed if you are going into laser surgery. Now, some people stay silent when they're in pain. So if you or you know someone that's struggling, please reach out and I'll leave the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline in the, in the description. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching and please stay safe and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!